Hello everybody and welcome to just the small pitching of what I'm about to talk about. I just did a video on this coming book along with two others. Um, you can go, by and check, go back and check it out. It is called Collector's Comments, Volume 24, The Morris Porter Books. Go check it out right away. I, I just uploaded it. Don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe to that video. Please like it and please smack the uh, please smack the like like I just said. I don't know why I double that. But anyway, hit the notification bell on top. Now, let's go ahead and begin. Alright, now you're wondering why I'm showing this pick this book again for this book is actually special. This is a book that for many, many years I tried to get. And you can go on eBay and you won't find this book not in great condition. But this book here is in fine very fine condition which makes it a 7.0 or 7.5 grade for this book because it has some little um breaks on the spine but they're not color breaks you really can't tell but it is some bents on the book but no color breaks but this book cost me 95 bucks and this book actually like I said, I said this book is actually hard to find in fine condition or very fine condition for all that matter it's mostly either pre-owned or good or very good and it's on ebay and you can check them out and they remain different prices but if it's but if it's fine very fine slash very fine very fine very fine plus you will pay between 90 bucks to 100 penny on the condition of the book but like i said this book is very fine fine very fine it's fine, very fine in the condition this book is in. The book called the 95 off and it's also the first appearance of death, of Marvel death, which is War's Hell number nine. Now, let's get into specific reasons why I'm doing it. Um okay, this book was created and drawn by um let me see, hold on. It says here Marvel Comics format, original ongoing series, limited series. War Horror, War, that's the germ. Um, publication day, January 1973, 1975. I think that that's the ongoing series um, year. Um, all the way to May, September 2008. And that was called The First Fight of the Phantom Eagle. Um, main characters, John Kowalski, Delft, and Phantom Eagle. Phantom Eagle didn't appear in this book. He appeared in the book before this one. Just so you know, um, written by Chris Claremont, Garth Ennis. Pencilers are Dick Ayers, Don Perlin, Don, Don Perlin Herb Trimpe, let that see Trimpe or Trimpe, or Howard um, Howard Shaken, and the inkers are Frank Frank uh, Springer, Herb Trimpe, and Howard Shaken again. Um, okay, now. According to John, John Kowalski, I mean John Kowalski is the character of the, the book. It said during the series, Kowalski inhabits bodies of those about to die. John Kowalski is death, in case you guys hadn't pegged that. Um, not necessarily in the same side or sex. During World War II, including both the European and Pacific theaters, and need to change things for the better before he is killed. That death summons him from the nether regions each story and Kowalski wonders how many times he will have to do so. The series was created by writer Tony Isabella but after successful pitching the series and submitted its plot for the first issue, his new position as editor ate up a lot of his writing time. It's better recalled that Roy Thomas, Marvel editor, wants to get Dick Ayers to sign the series um, to replace it, the living Colossal, Colossus, and asked me to come up with the new series for War as Hell. Dick and I have worked together on a number of things and enjoyed working with each other. Okay, now Chris Claremont, a former politician for a former political Theorist and historian took over the series writer for the remainder of the run, according to Claremont. The parameters that were, I mean, were that 
we were going to sequently um, thorough the war. The rest was up to me. My Love Must Die, a story published in War's Head Number 12, in which Kowalski is brought together with his lost love and son, and gener is generally considered the high point of the series. Penciler Dom Perlin kept the kept the original art for page I mean for page sixteen of the story from the story in his home in one in, in one of his favorites. The series was canceled in issue fifteen, which Claremont said was no surprise. Nobody thought it would last more than six issues. Fifteen issues not bad. So Claremont's intentions for Kowalski were revealed when he wrote volume two of Man Thing and incorporated the character into the final two issues, um, 10 and 11, okay. By this point, the early 1980s, Kowalski had become an effect, an, an effect of death. He, made, he makes Bobby Bannister, a recently orphaned by Murder Rich Girl, introduced by Claremont in Man Thing volume two, number five, another aspect of death as they battle Chef John Daughtry, Daughtry, who was possessed by the sword of Captain Fate. He causes the deaths of Doctor Strange, Man Thing, Jennifer Kale, and Chris Claremont himself, although these deaths are undone by the end of the story. In order to battle Thog the Netherspawn, who is using Fate and Daughtry as his pawns in another gambit to take over Earth 616. Other stories which Claremont has plans for before the series were canceled, including a story based on Vietnam as the U.S. troops were attempting to push back the Japanese invaders and the story is set in the Nazi concentration camps with a young Magneto playing the role. Hmm. Okay. Um, Kowalski later appeared in Scarlet Witch in the story by Dennis Maloney, writer, and John Ridgway, artist, in Soto Avengers 5. I got Soto, I got the Soto Avengers series. I gotta go back and check that out. Okay, ah, right, here we go. It's an auto, okay, here's the, here's the, here's the, the biblical, off, the, the biblical, the biblical orthography of the, of the books. Wars Hell 9, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15. Alright, remember it said stopped at 15. And then it went on to um, Man Thing Volume 2, number 10, number 2, number 11, and Soul Ventures 5. I got those books. Okay, I, I, I remember I, I got to get those. But anyway, I just wanted to give you some specific details on this book here because this actually a great, great book to have. Like I said, it's in fine near no 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 I don't remember fine very fine condition the book has to be um has to be pressed because like I said it has some wrinkles on the side of the of the spine and like I said this book costs 95 bucks but you can't find this book in fine very fine um very often on eBay because it's a high end book this book costs 95 bucks like I said I paid like, like I said I paid like 95 bucks for this book I got it and um I love it you know what I'm saying? And this one of the books that, that I've been wanting to get for many, many years because, because I, already, I always knew the first parents of death. I just never knew how I was going to get the issue. And, and we're talking about way back in, um, back, way back in 1984, 85. I, I just collect these Marvel Universe books. And Death was mentioned in one of those books and that I wanted to get it. When they said War is Hell Number 9, I knew War is Hell Number 9 came out in the 70s. Like I said, in 1973. And this book at the time was hard to find, and so, and, and so to, have this, to have this book in my possession is a blessing. My mission now is to get it, um, to get it, to get it, um, pay, get get it, get it pressed, and have this book ready for a better grade. Cause right now it, it's a seven. Right now this book is graded at a 7.0, 7.5. If I have to get it pressed, it'll be somewhere close to a nine or higher. Wow. Again, y'all, war as hell. Check out the other videos. Before you check this one out, and I'm the Almighty Green Talons, I am out of here. Enjoy your Saturday.